had enough money to do his drugs, I would be stronger. Right? It's literally that, you know, it's that, so pretty soon it ends up being like, who's got the richest sponsor, right? And then is it Olympic anymore? Is it even amateur athletes? So that's been the argument against it, right? And then the pressure downward has gotten big. So when I was in Indiana, basketball was a religion. Like, you don't miss basketball, right? And the kids are under a lot of pressure. You know, these 10-year-olds going to these three-month camps and skipping school to go shoot three-pointers and stuff like that, thinking this is going to be their history and their future. When I was in Mississippi, I mean, it's not Texas, but football is really big, right? And we got 16, 17-year-old boys trying to get on the steroids so they can juice up and get into the big college to get into the big play, to get into the... Right? And these fantasies about pro sports. Right? And those guys make big money. Right? When I was at USC, so the Cal, those football players had a chance. Right? Those guys actually could make the pros. Uh, I had a classmate at Columbia, of all places, who played two exhibition games for the Detroit Lions. Like, People do it, right? Somebody's got to make it. Somebody's on TV. Right? And this pressure to do this then contributes to that. What's the other contributor? And of course, it was worse when I was in Los Angeles. These distorted body image things in both the men and the women. Right? So you got these guys with these 18-inch biceps going, I'm such a fucking puny shit. Oh, man, I just got to get, I got to find a new doctor, right? <laughs> Eating 3,000 calories a day, working out twice a day, right? spending more money on steroids than they're bringing in for, um, you know, hey, I won this, I won this championship cup. Right? And for the women, it's even worse, right? They're spending way more money on their steroids than they can possibly win, even if they, they get the good exercise gig, right? One, like, muscle-bound woman makes it on TV and everybody's like, oh, my God, I want to be her. So it's tough. L.A. is some sick shit, though. Crazy. Crazy. Right. And then everybody was supposed to deny it. So, uh, who's the dude who won all the bike races? Lance Armstrong. Armstrong right? Oh, yeah, I got testicular cancer, but uh, had nothing to do with steroids. Right. Well... The acute effects, I mean, before we get into all the gross stuff, the acute effects are, guess what? You really do butch it up, and you really do get bigger. You still have to work the muscle to failure, though, right? It's not like, oh, you take these drugs, and the next day you're fucking Franco Columbo or Arnold Schwarzenegger or something like that. You still have to work out, right? But the potential increase and the rate of increase is markedly faster when you're on these drugs. However... Long-term use consequences, shrunk in testicles, right? Your testicles are there, protect them, guys, like I need to tell you, right? To put out testosterone, to put out the hormone that's was behind all this anabolic and androgenic response. If there's already enough free-floating chemicals relevant, what do your testes say? Don't need me no more. And in the big steroid prevention thing they do in the high schools, the teacher's supposed to blow up a balloon and then let it shrink. Like, okay. The problem is these high school teachers don't know, so I had a guy who grabbed me going, my teacher said if you smoke pot, your testicles will shrink, and then she blew up this balloon. I was like, no. no. There ain't that much pot in the world. But steroids, no good. Okay, diminished sperm count. Okay, like these guys care, right? The last thing you need when you're spending all your money on steroids and trying to win a weightlifting competition is a baby. Enlarged breasts. Okay? Not for women. Okay? Not that, believe me, all your breasts are perfect. Right? <laughs> but for men, and it looks totally gross. I've got a slide of it. it. It looks creepy, right? And then they have to drain it after one. No, it's totally. Do people still watch Fight Club? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it... good example. And then frequent sustained painful erections. 
The whole idea of painful and erection in the same sentence, I realize, makes no sense to most of you guys. Uh, and in all honesty, happy to say, I got no idea what that is either. Right? <laughs> but imagine having a boner all the time that hurts. In a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> and that is called priapism. Right? You get stuck with two P's and scrabble. And priapism is a great hangman word. Nobody can guess that one. <laughs> okay, I ain't gonna mask yet. And this guy ain't exactly butched up yet. He just got all the bad negative consequences. Can you imagine waking up to the like, god damn it? <laughs> Like your body fat, like you're a woman and suddenly your body fat is 9%, you're not going to have 